Make sure you are seated comfortably, your body relaxed. Close your eyes and focus your attention on your breath, feeling the gentle rise and fall of your lungs. Allow any tensions and worries to slip away with each out-breath, releasing all negativity. With each in-breath, draw in purifying clean air. Slowly let all outside concerns fade away. The space around you begins to darken as your attention moves inwards. Your awareness of the world around you recedes, leaving only a quiet, peaceful darkness. You rest a moment in the darkness, feeling yourself safe and secure. The darkness spreads out in all directions, vast and silent. You rest within the great void, Ginunga Gap, the emptiness before creation, before the beginning of time and the birth of space. Within this void all things will come into being. In the very distance on either side of you, you are aware of the realms of fire and ice, so far away you can barely perceive them. Through their union, force and form will come into being, and the worlds will be set in motion. It is in this place that you will meet Urus. In the centre of the void you see a small light, a tiny spark of vitality. We will call the name of Urus three times to bring it into being. Urus. Urus. Of your voice, the spark of light transforms, glowing deep green and becoming the shape of your rune. It grows larger and larger, shining brightly in the darkness, steadily moving towards you until it comes to a rest, waiting for you to enter. Slowly you pass through the rune and into the realm beyond. You are standing on a wide plain the scrubby grass spreading out in the distance on all sides. Behind you is a small shelter where you spent the previous night in contemplation, seeking the strength and wisdom to fulfil the task you have set yourself. In the night, unseen hands have placed objects on the ground by your shelter, a bow, arrow and spear bundled together and, further away, a beautiful aurochs horn, polished and set with silver. Your night's meditation has told you that yours is a quest for healing, and so you take up the horn, knowing that the path you have chosen is no less perilous than that of the hunter, even though you seek life rather than death. The horn has a leather strap, and you swing it across your back and set off away from the shelter. The land is silent around you, and not even a single bird wings its way across the sky as you make your way over the plain. The air seems pregnant with anticipation, the silence heavy and pondering. When it comes, the roar of the aurochs is almost a relief, ripping across the plain, piercing the stillness. Its wild power sends shivers through your body, your heart thumps within your breast. In the very distance you see a cloud of dust form, growing ever larger as the aurochs bears down upon you. Its hooves thunder across the plain, and you begin to see its dark shape looming through the dust cloud, a wide shadow churning up the ground. You can now make out its broad shoulders, its head lowered, glistening horns bent towards you, sharp enough to run you through in an instant. Your breath is shallow as terror wells up inside you gripping hold of your body, constricting your throat. Every fibre of your being screams at you to turn and run as the mighty aurochs charges. Gathering all your resolve and determination, you square your shoulders to face the aurochs, fixing the charging beast with a steady gaze. Slowly, you lower yourself to a kneeling position and stretch out your arms, palms open, to show you present no threat. 
Gradually the beast starts to slow, the dust cloud dying down, his horns tilting back as he pauses to assess you. You remain motionless, keeping your gaze calm and steady. The moment seems to last an eternity, but at least the aurox takes a deep breath and drops his eyes, tilting his head to one side, becoming calm. He shakes himself and stamps the ground, but his eyes are gentle and his demeanour calm. He is waiting for you. Carefully and cautiously you walk towards him, stretching out one hand until you touch his hide with your fingers. His hair is coarse and matted with dust. Even though the aurochs has lowered himself to the ground, it is still a struggle for you to climb up. He bears with you patiently as you scramble up upon his back your hands between his mighty shoulder blades, holding on tightly as he raises his feet and begins to move. The power of the aurochs flows through you as his hooves beat upon the ground. The dust that rises around you forms a haze that blurs your vision. You can just make out the landscape of green speeding past as the aurochs leaps forward, snorting joyfully as he runs across the plain. Your breath is knocked out of you by the wildness and power of this mighty creature that bears you so fast over the land. The aurochs runs and runs ever onwards across the plain. Above you the sky darkens as night descends, but still the aurochs does not slow. His energy seems inexhaustible. Behind you the sun shoots out its last rays of gold and the sky is lit up in purple and pink. Then the light fades and the stars twinkle into being above you, the moon forming a thin sickle of light in the inky darkness. All is silent except the pounding of the aurochs' hooves, marking out a steady rhythm upon the drum belly of the plain. The air is chilly now, sharp and crisp. Beneath you, the grass of the plain whitens with a thin film of frost. On the aurochs travels, as the night runs its course, the frost thickening until the plain gleams white beneath the moonlight. In the distance you see a thin band of silver stretching out over the horizon, a pool of shimmering light at the edge of the vast white plain. As you watch, the pre-dawn light makes it gleam, and a single ray of gold shoots up over what you now recognise to be a great lake. As you reach the shore, the aurochs comes to a halt and kneels once more for you to climb down. Although you have been riding for many hours, your limbs don't ache as you scramble down, but the aurochs looks tired, his coarse coat dirty and matted and his eyes dull. You run to the edge of the water and call to the aurochs to follow you. Slowly he lumbers to the edge of the lake, and the two of you wade into the shallows, the chill of the water making your teeth chatter and your legs ache. As the aurochs enters the water, he lets out a sigh of contentment. With reverence he lowers his head and begins to drink thirstily. You watch him for a moment, and then, taking the horn from your back, you slowly fill it with water. But, instead of drinking as you had intended to, you pour the water over the back of the aurochs. Again the aurochs sighs with pleasure and you see that, where the water falls, his hide is washed, pure white. The aurochs wades further and further out into the lake, going further than you dare, submerging himself in the shimmering silver of the water, letting it wash him clean. You watch in silence as he emerges, and in the rosy light of the dawn, you see that his coat is now pure white, his horns glistening black, and his eyes the colour of molten gold. As he steps out of the water and shakes himself, the scrubby grass of the plain begins to deepen in colour, growing lush and vibrant, filled with the strength and beauty that the aurochs embodies. Once more the aurochs sets off on his journey across the plain, bringing the strength and healing of Urus to the land he loves. In the morning light he seems almost intangible, the white of his hide mingling with the rays of the sun and the rising mist of the frost melting. Eventually his outline is lost in the dancing light, and you are alone once more. 
Slowly you step out of the water and look down at the horn in your hands. You are overcome by sadness, for in your own world the aurochs is extinct. Carefully you lay the horn down by the edge of the lake. You know that it will be there for you, should you need it for healing, but for now you dip a single finger into the waters of the lake and trace the symbol of the Oru's rune upon your forehead. It tingles upon your skin, sending a thrill through your whole body, refreshing you and filling you with energy. You stand and look out across the great lake and the green plain. You know that it is time to depart. In the air before you, you draw a bright and glowing Uru's rune in deep green. You say farewell to the plain, and give thanks to the great aurochs who carried you on your journey. Slowly you walk towards the rune, and pass through it, feeling its power caress you as you pass out of the realm of Urus into darkness once more. Standing in the darkness, you give thanks to the rune for its lessons and energy. You watch as it fades away, leaving you in darkness, ready to return to your physical form. Slowly you let your attention return to your body, feeling the darkness around you start to fade. You let your awareness expand to the space around you as the darkness recedes. You feel yourself centred within your body, your attention focused on your physical presence, your breath and your heart beat. The Uru's rune has gone and you begin to wiggle your fingers and toes, bringing yourself back to normal reality. Take your time and when you are ready, open your eyes.